Hey everybody, welcome to the Evolve Project where we answer your questions. And also... I thought it'd be funny if the song came in right there. So, in today's episode, we have this question that came in from Joseph Labiacho, Labrachan. Go for it, Joseph. So a little little background before I ask this question. Uh, I was in a relationship um, that is now over. So it lasted about a year and a month. Uh, it was last year. And I've been blindly stumbling on how to get through this and get over this and um, get through the, the painful and really miserable feelings that I have from that relationship. Like I felt insecure and not confident and really, really bad about myself because of the certain situations in that relationship. Am I not accepting it fully? Am I not accepting what this person did to me? And is that why it keeps coming back? Or is it simply a matter of my consistency? Like, am I, am, you know, if I accept it fully and the right way, will it end? You know, will it stop? Or will I ever feel this again? Dude, you guys are like amazing. Like I, I'm not seeing these videos until right now. And that guy's heart is just on the line. I totally get you. I get you a lot. <clears throat> I know that feeling, man. It's a crazy feeling, right? You'll break up with someone and then you'll, your mind will come up with all the memories of amazing things you did. And your mind will trick you into thinking the reason you had so much fun was just that person. It was also that person, but it also is the fact that you were evolving that time, that you were doing something new, that you a lot of times went to a thing that you hadn't experienced before. So you ended up surrendering in a different way to the unknown and, and got to kind of combine this new feeling with this, con, this ongoing feeling. Um, so that's the first thing is we think that we're, a lot of times it's all about that person. And it's really about what you felt when you were with that person. From doing a lot of deep inner work, I learned one thing that happens for me, especially in the past, is there's a type of woman sometimes that can really grab my heart. And I wondered why it was, and I realized that quite a bit of them have a lot in common with my mom. When I was a kid, my mom used to play Motown music for me. It was amazing. Then I went into my 20s dating women only because if they liked Motown. Like I would be like, do you like Motown? And then they, if they did, I th I'd feel this addictive connection. And I felt like I was connecting with my mom. I felt like I was getting that same unconditional love that I got when I was five years old with my mom, who when I was just learning how to develop was playing me the Jackson 5 and the Temptations and things like that. So it went through this phase where I wanted people who went through the same thing <laughs> as my mom, where I could feel that same love that I remembered when I was a kid. And, you know, there's so much work that I've done that's shown me that that's not actually true, that, that's, that it's ego that's being fulfilled. In fact, there, when I was younger, many times I would try to tell my mom a joke and sometimes she wouldn't laugh and I would immediately try to convince her that it was funny. My poor mom would have to deal with me just being like, mom, it's really funny, it's really funny. And I found myself at one point only attracted to women who didn't laugh at my jokes. <laughs> like it would be like, because then my ego could finally overcome that. My ego could go, okay, if I get this woman, and then by the way, if I dated someone and she didn't laugh at my jokes, my ego felt this massive connection to my mom. And then if she did finally start laughing, I, I wasn't interested. I'd be like, no, you're the woman that I have to overcome. And when I finally overcome it, I'm gonna be bored out of my mind. So don't let me overcome it. Just constantly be this block for me to remind me of plant times in my childhood. So. I realize there's all kinds of different things that we're attracted to and then there's things that we're attracted to because they trigger us and that's where we get that high, that addictive thing, that this is the highest source of love that I've ever known and that's because you don't know that there's a source of love higher, your acceptance of yourself. So I've also taught myself, if I'm in pain, that is the worst time to go after something. 
Because if you're saying you're incomplete and you need this person and you get the person, then really that person is just an addiction for you, right? You're stopping yourself from feeling pain. You're, it's not something that's necessarily adding to your life, it's numbing pain. So if pain is the thing that's driving you to go after someone, that is saying you'll fulfill, you'll fulfill, you'll fill the hole of my pain. So you're the source of my happiness. So know that the pain that you're feeling is a calling for you to grow. And it might be to just feel the pain for a while. And maybe accepting something isn't something that you can just manually do. It might be something that needs to accept itself through time. Because I went through that. I, I broke up with someone uh, over a year ago and I went through a lot of pain and I really missed the person. I went through this thing and I was like, I'm in pain, so I can't call her. <laughs> like, you'll just be a drug for me and we'll just stay the same and I'll be this incomplete person. But I was just like, let time actually do it. That's how you accept. You can't force accept something so that you will be healed. In other words, your acceptance is I'm accepting it so the pain will go away. And you're treating acceptance the same way you're treating the woman. Like, I want this so the pain will go away. And pain is here so we can grow into a place of actually accepting it the way that it needs to be accepted, not the way we've decided we'll accept it, right? So if you decide, no, I'm, I don't feel pain anymore, right? I'm gonna try to block it. That's you going to any addiction you can to just numb pain. But pain is here so that you can learn to love yourself on a level of accepting that you're feeling pain, not transcending it your way. Your ego can't create your own breakthrough. Your ego can't create a breakthrough because what a breakthrough is is when the part of you that's trying to make the breakthrough dies and you realize that you're the space on the other side of that person that's trying. Who's trying to create the breakthrough here? What'll happen when you create the lack of pain? What'll happen? Who's saying that the pain shouldn't be there? That's ego. The part of you that's judging the pain and saying, well, I gotta do this, <clears throat> that's ego. So you're moving from a place that you're actually going to end up transcending over time. So the part of you that sees the pain is being looked at from the part of you that is also the pain. But that's not what you are. You're just looking at through it, you're just looking at it through pain glasses, right? You're just and you think the pain glasses are you. So you actually transcend it for real by first of all going through days fully accepting that you're in pain. And now ego is going to show up and go, I'm going to try and find pain. No, accept what you're feeling now. Don't accept the pain so that it'll leave. You've been trying to accept the pain somewhat, but also somewhat so that it'll leave. And when you're going, it's still there. That means you get to learn a new level of acceptance of yourself. It's still there. I still feel the pain. Cool. Really cool. I wanna also throw you something because you said a sentence that you probably were just saying in passing but is very significant when you said she did this to me. Eckhart Tolle talked about this once, but no one can do anything to you. I really believe that. Everyone does what they can do the best they know with the awareness that they're at. So when people say this person cheated on me, no, this person did a thing. The to you part is the part where you bring yourself in and you make the action that they took that has nothing to do with you, you made it personal about you. And that's where your pain is. That doesn't mean you have to live with someone who's doing that. But that does mean that you need to know that the pain you're feeling is not something that that person did to you. It's what you're hearing as to you. And maybe that pain is here so you can learn to love yourself on a new level because you're personalizing something that someone did and you're making it about you. And that's where your pain is. And that's where you're lashing out at them. But that's based on your level of awareness. Your awareness up until this video was at a point where someone could do something to you. I don't believe anyone can do anything to me. Yes, someone, if someone, it doesn't mean I wouldn't protect myself from someone that would go out of their way to hurt me. But I don't believe that my pain psychologically is able to be affected nearly as much anymore by people doing something to me. Someone does something and their anger or their craziness or their whatever is an example of their awareness. And they're asking for me to be a space of love without knowing it. They're asking for me to be a space of acceptance because if I can accept them, I might show them an acceptance that they have and they might not lash out as much because they suddenly love themselves. So take in this idea that this woman you dated did something to you because that's where you're feeling the pain also. 
So take in that that's a lie. She did something. You've decided if it's to you, you personalized it. So now she did something. Why are you in resistance to what she does? Why are you, someone can yell at you, okay. It's up to you if you wanna argue with that they're yelling at you also. Doesn't mean you have to stay living with them. It doesn't mean you wanna keep these people in your life necessarily. But the personalized pain comes from you deciding that other people shouldn't do what they do. Even if they're aiming it at you, they can't hurt you unless you decide that they shouldn't be doing that. The other aspect that I wanna just mention that I think is a given um, that we don't realize is society has really painted this picture that it's better to be in a relationship than not. Now, I'm not saying it's better to be single, but I am saying it's not better to be in a relationship in my eyes. In other words, I believe that a relationship is a byproduct of your connection to yourself. And there's times where we need to work on connecting to ourselves and we need to do it alone. And there's a given in every movie and every song in the world that I love you and you complete me and I'm incomplete. And that is why we need to do this work so we know that we're complete. I really believe that that is such a calling in our world and that part of the thing that might be causing your pain and most people that go through breakups is the constant conditioning since birth that love is found outside of ourselves. This constant conditioning that you have to be in a relationship. People say to single people all the time, why aren't you in a relationship? And my buddy Brian Reeves said, no one says to a person in a relationship, why aren't you single? But that's also a thing. Like, why is it better to society? Why is there an underlying unconscious belief system that being in a relationship is better than being single? It's okay that you're single. And really go, it's okay that I'm not with this person. And by the way, what does with mean? She's not standing next to you right now. You don't have the mental title that you have her later. You don't have ownership of her. Osho said beautifully, I can't believe how many quotes I'm bringing in tonight, but Osho said, if you find a flower and you pick it up, then you'll kill it and it'll stop being the thing that you loved about it. So a relationship isn't about ownership. It's not about control. It's not about having. It's about appreciation. And you can't do that until you appreciate yourself on a whole new level. So that's what this pain is for. It's here so that you will learn to love yourself so much that eventually it'll decide and you got to surrender when it'll happen. That pain will drop based on you loving yourself. And when you love yourself, you will have a whole new line of people that you can meet and hang out with and eventually marry because they love themselves too. But you will get back what you put out. And if you're in a place where I need someone to be happy, you will only be able to date other people who also need someone. And you will have two codependent people who are filling an addiction and avoiding themselves. So it's time for you to meet yourself and it's time for you to get excited about you because that's available right now. And you have the choice of right now going, yeah, I feel these things and accepting it when the pain's still there, I accept that too. And it's not like I'm gonna accept it harder or I'm gonna get in there and really accept it. It's like, I'm going to feel, I'm going to accept that I'm in pain today. I have so many times where I meditate and I'll feel this lump and this major pain and I go, I guess I'm gonna be in pain today. And very often when I finally truly go, I guess I'm gonna be in pain today, it leaves. So. I think you're awesome, Joseph, and I really appreciate you really putting your heart on the line and making that video. And when I saw the video too, I saw it had like 419 views. So you really are putting your heart out on the line and just, I mean, it'd take a lot to get me to make a video like that, to say, I'm in pain, I have this thing, help me to another speaker. That would be amazingly challenging for me. So I really want to commend you and just tell you how courageous you are and how how much courage it takes to do that is more courageous than it takes to deal with the pain that you're going to slowly transcend. So know that you have enough courage in you to deal with this because you had the courage to make that video. So thanks for writing me or, and while well, you said Kyle watch probably or you titled the video. Thanks for titling your video. So I watched it and tagging me and thanks for making the video. Dude, love yourself, love yourself. That's what the world needs. The world needs us to love ourselves, not love each other like addictions. Love ourselves so that we can bring that to the world and do something with it. Talk to you soon.